you can make tuna for that. What do they call this? Capkins, is it? I don't know. Maybe. Anybody know? I think they might be catkins or something. Something like that. Napkins. There's another human being. <laughs> There's a few of those around. Leicester's strange. Are all people weird from Leicester? No. <laughs> Everybody's weird. Do you know anybody that isn't weird? Too many people. They all think they're normal, but they're not. What's normal? Abnormality. But nothing can be normal. Everything's normal. No, everything's different. in our alternative rock band that we were sick to death of and uh, I came back from work one day and Nick had been uh, playing with tapes and tape loops and harmonicas and making a strange sound and uh, that was it really, that got the ball rolling so we started recording everything that we could that wasn't a musical instrument just the sounds of the house, the squeaky banisters, and windows. Mm. But I don't know really what compelled me to, to do that. Neither do I. No, I never. I just I had no aspirations to do that. I just started doing it. Kind of fell into it, really, as a what would the word be? As a revolt to what we'd done before, playing normal music. Fuck that. Get out of there. It was just fun, wasn't it? You know, it was. It was a terrible, exciting thing to do, to think that you can pick up a, a ruler and twang it on the end of the table and make a track out of the noise. 
it was a revelation to just start hearing all these sounds that you kind of maybe hear all the time but don't really pay any attention to, you know, and amplifying them really loud. So just, I don't know, even two bits of paper being rubbed together. You know, that was you, a good you, track, I remember. <laughs> what, what, but you what, wouldn't what call that one? <laughs> but you wouldn't normally see any interest in that. But when you amplify it, you know, 50 times louder than you, you're used to hearing it, it just brings, you know, this whole new world just opens up. <laughs> A lot of start getting into a lot of jazz stuff, free jazz. Um, a lot of improvised music in general. Lots of uh, strange folk music from around the world. Going to car boot sales and picking up records of Himalayan music and indigenous folk stuff. Anything, everything was interesting. Everything that wasn't kind of normal or what we perceive to be normal, you know. Anything that was at all different. But it got to the point quite quickly, I think, where we didn't consciously try and play anything strange, you know. We weren't trying to be strange. We were just interested in different sounds and, you know, it kind of ended up the way it has done over the years. But no, isn't it? We, didn't, we didn't intend to be radical, you know, and, and the idea of being difficult, you know, or kind of intellectual or whatever, something that requires a bit of thought. I mean, you know, we want to appeal to as many people as possible. Really. You know, quite often people will come to our shows who wouldn't dream of listening to that kind of music. And people generally kind of get off on it because just of the energy and the atmosphere that's created. Oh, yeah, a lot of times it's not really about the music, is it? No, I mean, it, you know, live especially, you know, you have to be there, really. I mean, listening back to them, it's, you know, not that there's really any kind of such a thing as a mistake when you're playing improvised music. It's, you know, the moment is much more important quite often than the music, I'd say, in a live performance. Obviously, it's different in the studio, and, you know, we really go to town on things, and it's just different, really. I'm really pissed off now. I think we kind of started with this idea that yeah, it would be a big free-for-all and we can anyone can 
being involved came to the bear, and very quickly we decided that no, not anyone can be involved came to the bear. And uh, there was probably a few people who would have liked to have been, but at the time we started, people we were hanging around with were all really into the idea, but they weren't really the right material. Not that we consciously looked for the right people. Well, we always we didn't we didn't want to be in a band. I mean, I think that another main reason for playing the music we do and, and kind of starting Volcano the Bear is we just got completely fed up of being in a band. You know, like a, just a group that rehearses and band politics and you know trying to please everybody in the group and trying to wrestle something out of music that everybody likes. And yeah. The more people that are involved, the, the more difficult it gets. I mean, we were extremely lucky to find like-minded souls in Lawrence and, and Daniel because we never intended it to, to be anyone other than Aaron and myself really and, and just like incorporate other people's talents along the way just employ people to do different things but well, I don't think we really became a band until a few years afterwards no I suppose. it was always like very free and uncompromising and, and even now it doesn't feel like a band no there's no uh there is no band politic. We will go massive periods of time without recording music or without getting together or seeing each other. Without seeing each other, without rehearsing. Well, we only tend to rehearse when we've got to play a gig. Because we, we treat the live thing very differently. It's almost like the live thing is like a different band. I think the more it, the more it becomes like a band, the less fun it becomes. Then. The less, you know, the more tedious it becomes. The less spontaneous. Yeah. I mean, obviously, over the years, we've had to deal with sort of record companies and, you know, organising things ourselves and, and all, everything else that goes with it, but... You know, I have to organise everything. Yeah. You don't do anything. I, do, I, have, to do, I have to do everything. I've done, I've done stuff over the years. <laughs> we can have an argument now. <laughs> What made me stay in Leicester would Always. be better. Well, before you, I went to school here. But well, I was born not very far away. Just under that bench over there. <laughs> <coughs> and uh, Leicester was the nearest city, and I moved here for music, really. Because the people that I was playing with and the places to play were in Leicester. And that's why I stayed as well.
pretty good. Better than I could do. <laughs> This hand is about the same size as Lawrence's. Nick, what brought you to Leicester? I was born here. <laughs> Under that bench. <coughs> I think we're, we're, we're easily pleased. Are <laughs> we, oh, really? Let's put it in. Yes, Leicester, it's not very exciting. A bit like me and Nick, really. <laughs> um, it really is one of the least exciting cities in the country. There's some nice, pleasant parks, and that's it. <laughs> but there's no real... Uh, there's no scene to speak of, if anything. No, part. it's not particularly highly cultured. Uh, which I think is is partly responsible for what we do. There's no contemporaries here. You know what I mean? We were the scene in Leicester was me, Nick, Lawrence, and Daniel. That was it. That was the scene when we all played together. So yeah, there was. It's you know it's rock bands and punk bands and dodgy blues covers bands and any claims to fame? Me or Leicester? Leicester. 
Well, it, Leicester is famous for having the fattest man that ever lived in England. He was born here. And the ugliest man uh, that was ever born in England, the elephant man, John Merrick, he was born here as well. So it's famous for fat and ugly people. Daniel Lambert's socks are like sleeping bags. <laughs> Have you seen them in the museum? Yeah, you can see Daniel Lambert's socks and they are pretty big. <laughs> but, but on the scale of things, he wasn't really that fat. I mean, he wasn't like as fat as a lot of Americans. He was the, <laughs> <laughs> he was the, he was the heaviest man any ever, wasn't he? Uh, so that, that'd be the claims to fame. Oh, Richard Attenborough, yeah. the film director. And David, Attenborough. And David Attenborough. David Attenborough, his, his husband. <laughs> <laughs> his, his brother. What else is fam Lester famous for? Shwaddy Waddy. Some um, guy out of Queen. Some guy out of Queen. <laughs> Which one? Oh, John okay. Deacon, the boring one out yeah. of Queen. <laughs> yes. Um, didn't um, Bill Ward from Black Sabbath used to live in the village that my parents lived in? Yeah. Yeah. And a bloke that was in Flash Gordon. Volcano the Bear would be a more popular outfit if we were from London. I don't think it would make any difference. But people, you know, you always kind of see in reviews, oh, Leicester band Volcano the Bear. People seem really interested by the fact that we come from Leicester, but yeah, it's of no consequence God, whatsoever. Yeah. These <laughs> bands are so crazy, you know, they don't come from where you think they come from, they come from boring old Leicester. In fact, the, 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 the Leicester Tourist Board, you go into town, all the posters have got boring. Leicester, boring. Seriously, that's how they're selling it. And then they kind of say, ah, but it's not boring because, you know. Because <laughs> we, we, you know, a big fat bloke lived here. And the Queen came here last year, so it can't be boring. What did the Queen do when she came here? Uh, she fell asleep in Daniel Lambert's sock. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> I don't think she did very much. We didn't come and see Volcano the Bear. <coughs> it's litter. That's part of the sculpture. <laughs>